three jars. Here's jar A, jar B, and jar C. So jar A contains one red ball and two white balls. So let's change that. There's two red balls and three white balls. Jar B contains two red balls and two white balls.
You divide, come on, man. So you get the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. This is what you're going to use on every problem tonight. This is called conditional probability. Here, I'll even write it on the board. Conditional probability. Now, every single year, the hardest thing the student's got to do is you got to read the words and you got to determine what is this. You got to determine which one is A and which one is B. So if a red ball is picked, what is the probability that it came from jar B? Now, does that mean we need to compute the probability that it came from jar B knowing that a red ball is picked? Or is it the probability a red ball is picked, knowing that it came from jar B. So read these words right here. Is it the top one or the bottom one? Top or bottom? Oh, come on, 50-50 chance. Oh. Okay, you, well, there's two people that answer you guys. Yes, it is the top one. If a red ball is picked, what is the probability that it came from jar B? See, this is like, Compute the probability that it came from jar B, knowing that a red ball is picked. That's exactly what this is. So for those of could, because if you can't do this, you're not going to be able to do the problem. Okay, so Mr. Burr, I, 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 I don't get it. We're going to compute the probability of this, knowing or if this occurred. Now read the sentence though. What is the probability that, so whatever comes after this, that's what goes here. Because that's the probability that you're trying to find. Knowing, or if, notice the word if here. So whatever comes after the if goes over there. You're trying to compute the probability of this if this occurred already. You guys get it? Now, once you can translate that, the rest is, come on, you got the formula right there. So according to this, so that means this is jar B, and this one is, the ball is red. Okay, so I'll find the formula, what do we get? This is the probability that, so this is B, this is A. Just plug it into that. Probability that the ball is red, and it came from jar B, divided by the probability of, which one is A? That the ball is red. So you have to read the words and you gotta figure out which one is this and which one is that, and then you put it into the formula. Now, how do I compute this right here? Well, it's easy. You simply make what we call a probability tree. Where should we make it so that it shows up on the video? I guess we're going to have to do it right here. So when you're playing this game, this made of game, what's the first thing that you're going to do? You're going to roll a die, right? And when you roll a die, three things can happen, right? Either you're going to roll an even number. So either you're going to roll an even number, which is what, two, four, or six, or you're going to roll a one or a three, one or a three, and then, or a five. And then what we do is, so we're making what we call a probability tree. We put the probability of each of these things happening. So if you roll a die, what's the probability of getting an even number? One half, or do you want to just, let's just go three over six. If you roll a die, what's the probability of getting a one or a three? Two six, and then what's the probability of rolling a five? One out of six. And again, notice that if you add them up, you get one, because that's everything there. Now, if you roll an odd number, what can happen? You're either going to pull a ball from jar A, jar B, or jar C, right? No, that's wrong. <laughs> if, uh, if you roll an odd number, you're picking a ball from jar A. And when you pick a ball from jar A, it's either going to be red or white. And what's the probability of these things happening? Look, there's five balls. If, if I were to randomly draw one, what's the probability that it's going to be red? Two fifths, and then a white is three fifths. Everybody following? 
okay, now what happens if you roll a one or a three? You're going to pick a ball out of jar B, and what can happen? The ball is either red or white. What's the probability of those things happening? Three sevenths and four sevenths. Is that correct? If you roll a five, you're going to pick a ball out of jar C. Two things can happen. The ball is either going to be red or white. What's the probability of those things happening? Three-fourths, one-fourth. Okay, this is the, called the probability tree. Now, once you draw this probability tree, now you can figure out this. So, what is the probability that the ball was red and it came from jar B? What branches on this probability tree represents that? The ball is red and it came from jar B. Right here came from jar B, and then it's red. So what's the probability of this and this happening? What does and mean again? Multiply. So it's going to be 2 6 times 3 7. 2 6 times 3 7. And then you have to divide that by the probability that the ball was red. But there are three ways the ball could have been red. That was, let's make a different color. What are the three ways the ball could have been red? You could have picked the ball out of jar A, and then it's red. Or you could have picked the ball out of jar B, and then it's red. Or you could have picked the ball out of jar C, and it's red. So there's three ways that the ball could have been red. What's the probability of those things happening? What's the probability that you pull out a ball from jar A, and then it was red? So it would be this and this. Three six times two fifths. What's the probability that came from jar B? 2 6 times 3 7. And then what's the probability that it's red but it, it came from jar C here? 1 6 times 3 4. Does everybody see that? There's three ways the ball could have been red. It could have came from jar A, jar B, or jar C. So you've got to compute all those probabilities. That's your answer right there. So you write that on your paper. Now this problem takes a little longer than a normal probability problem. So instead of being worth four points, it's going to be worth six points on the test. So if you write this down, you're going to get five out of six. If you want the six point, you got to simplify that. So what would be the fastest way to simplify this number? Oh boy. Why don't we simplify each of the fractions? So how, how do you simplify this one? Maybe we should have left it one third like you guys were saying. So this is the same thing as one third. The threes cancel out, you get one seventh on the top. What about this one? Three over six is the same thing as one half. Two cancels two, and you get one fifth. One fifth. This one, of course, is the same thing as that one. So that's one, one, one seventh, correct? Yeah. And then what about this one? Three goes into six two times. One eighth. Okay, we still haven't gotten that last point yet. What's the fastest way to simplify complex fractions? Multiply top and bottom by the least common denominator. Now, what is the least common denominator here? It looks like it's 8 times 7 times 5, right? Which is? In fact, you know what? Why don't we just leave it 8 times 7 times 5? Multiply top and bottom by 8 times 7 times 5. 8 times 7 times 5. What do you get? When you multiply this times this, the sevens cancel out, and you get 40. 40. What happens when you multiply 8 times 7 times 5 times that? The fives cancel out, and you get 56. What happens when you multiply 8 times 7 times 5 times this one? The sevens cancel out, and you get 40. And then finally, what happens when you multiply 8 times 7 times 5 times that? The eights cancel out, and you get 35, and you still haven't gotten the last point yet. So all you have to do is simplify that. Let's go it up here. Go up here so it shows on the, on the video. 40 over... 31. Well, what is... If I were me, this is what I would do. I would add these two first. So you get, what, 91. 91 plus 40? 131. 131. Box that. Now I got the last point. So what's the hardest part of the problem? Adding up 
destruction? Maybe. So when you do conditional probability problem, there's only going to be one. There's only going to be one on the test. What you got to do is, in fact, you know what? I think it's going to be worth 80 points now. It just went up. You got to read the problem, translate it to this. Once you translate it to this, then you can apply this formula. And then how do you, how do I figure this out? You make the probability tree. So let's practice on like some of the homework problems tonight. Because the key is you got to read it and translate it to that. So let's read on one of the problems on the homework. Let's see. Let's do number two. I'm not going to do the whole problem for you, but we're just going to translate it. So read number two. Machine A produces 60% of the ball bearings manufactured by a factory. Machine B produces the rest. 5% of machine A's bearings fail to have the required precision. And 2% of machine B's bearings fail. If a bearing is inspected and fails to have the required precision, what is the probability that it was produced by machine A? So you got to look at that first last sentence. If, if a bearing is inspected and fails, so just put it fails, if the bar bearing fails, what is the probability that it was made by machine A? Let's just call it A then, for machine A. So how do you translate that? If it fails, what is the probability that it came from machine A? So it's just like this. So you look at the words. What is the probability that it came from machine A? So that's what we're trying to find, that it came from machine A, knowing that it fails. You want to just put F for fail? So that's what you got to do. OK, and then what is this equal to according to that thing right there? Probability that it fails, and it came from machine A, divided by the probability that it fails. That's what you got to do. And then you can simply make the, the tree for that. So like I told you before, what whatever comes is, what is the probability that, this, whatever comes here, that's the first one. And then whatever comes after the if is this one. Because that's what this bar means. It means if or given that. That's how you translate it. And if you can do that, this is quite easy. Because the probabilities are not going to be difficult. So you guys should be able to figure that part out. So look, we, that's it. That's, that's the lesson today. So you just got to practice and get good. You guys have 30 minutes left. In fact, you play your cards right, you can finish this homework before you leave today. In fact, I would highly suggest you do the first one at least to get the juices flowing. Because if you try the homework, I will guarantee 